Hi, I'm Paul Fix the Third, and this is a review of the 2016 Mini John Cooper Works Hardtop. I am so very, very, very excited to review this car because I had one from 2009. Kitted out almost exactly the same, except this one has an infotainment system, which is very welcome. Now we're actually fighting a thunderstorm right now, so let's get right to the review. So here we are on the inside of the 2016 Mini John Cooper Works hardtop, and oh, it's been too long. It's been almost a year since I've had my car. Her name was Helen. That was the 2009 Mini John Cooper Works hardtop. And then I learned how to drive actually on a 2002 Mini Cooper S, also a manual. Uh, and uh, so what's what's unique about this? What's what's new? Because I've, I've driven all three generations now. I think what's really important is that the driving style hasn't really changed. What is unique about Mini and what's unique about the John Cooper Works brand inside of Mini hasn't been lost. In fact, they've only improved upon it to a certain degree. And I'll get into that in a second. So the car still drives amazingly. It's got a really easy to use clutch and shifter where you can just throw it into gear and you can burn some rubber and take off and you can take turns hard and it leans and it just squats right into corners and it's really an impressive vehicle if you take it for what it is and you don't compare it to high-end sports cars because that's not what it is. It's, uh, it's like a fun machine. It's specifically meant to be practical, get good fuel economy, and be an incredible amount of fun and it achieves that whole, like, just absolutely in every respect. Now, this is the first time that a John Cooper Works has ever been offered with an automatic transmission. So this automatic transmission, what's interesting about it is that it has paddle shifters. This is also the first time that paddle shifters have ever been available in a Mini Cooper. Now, there's also another brand new feature which I wasn't entirely happy about at first, and that's automatic rev matching on downshifts. So the system automatic rev matching, essentially, as you downshift, it uh, automatically uh, puts uh, applies however much electronic throttle is needed for you to shift into that gear so you don't have to do it yourself. A manual is supposed to be the epitome of a pure driver's vehicle. I'll say this is an exception because I've gotten so used to it and I, I kind of now like the automatic rev matching. I could, I could do without it. I'd be okay with that. But it's, it's become something that I actually kind of like now. Other things that are really unique about this car, these gorgeous seats that I'm sitting in, and I didn't even know this was an option, and I've been following Mini for a long time, but I, I guess I haven't been paying close enough attention to the newer models. This seat is fantastic. It's pretty much a, as close as you can get to a real Recaro racing seat. It's got half Alcantara, half cloth with this cool racing, racing stripe the center, uh, down the center, and it's got this little embossing of John Cooper Works right in the seats, just like the badges on the outside of the car on the front and back. So, I'm so happy with this car. I miss, I miss my baby Helen, but I think it's important that I say that I may be a little biased here. Now there are a couple things that I'm not entirely happy about, like they've moved the speedometer and the tachometer, which is something I was very surprised that they did. So in the last generation of Mini Cooper, the tachometer uh, for your revs was directly in front of you so you couldn't miss it. You always knew uh, what, what speed your engine was at, it was very easy to just look straight down and know when you need to shift. And the speedometer was right in the center of the car where the radio stack was. I really liked that because it's original, it's classic. Now they've moved the speedometer directly in front of the driver, which is fine. I understand that that's something that's very common with a lot of cars and it makes sense to have some uniformity between vehicles so that when somebody gets in your car, they don't immediately say, oh, there's speedometers over there, the tachometer's over there, and they're not next to each other like in every other vehicle. So they moved the tachometer to the side of the speedometer and as you can see here it looks okay it looks fine it's got the whole uh, gas readout on the right side but when you're driving a manual it makes it kind of difficult to see the tachometer because it's kind of tiny 
So I'm so happy with the way that this car turned out and I, I think Mini really hit it on the head. Yeah, it's not perfect, but I don't care that it's not perfect. It's got so much personality and uniqueness that I think that this is the car of the future. Now follow us on social media, subscribe to us, I'm at PaulFix3. If you like this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies, I don't care. And make sure to watch the His Turn, Her Turn, His Turn version of uh, our mini video, which will be linked in the description. So thanks for watching.